Hey guys, Flay here. Today I will be demonstrating to you guys on how to do the fire and ice meteor mechanic on Dragon Song Surprise Ultimate. Do note that since my static is doing low amounts of proc hours, we are still cleaning this mechanic up and hence I do not have clean video footage of it yet. Due to this, I will be using this diagram only and show you guys how to do it. Either way, let's get back into it. So first things first, you have to locate two sets of preys onto two players. It will be either onto the techs and healers or to DPSs, that is role based. So here you notice that it is also onto the party list. Make sure to use that to your advantage. As soon as you notice on which role it is, call it out. So for example, here it is onto the techs and healers. We call out techs and healers. This is to help us on how to resolve the mechanic further on. We make sure that the prey markers, so for example, here it is the tanks that got it they go always north and south. This is only for consistency purposes. It could also be that a healer has it alongside his tank. And in the case that this happens, then a swap is required. So this would mean that uh, the paladin right here would go west and the white mage would go south. In that case, it would have been the sage, then the sage would go south and the paladin would go east instead. Let's look out at the next thing here. The prey marker players are going to be taking the clockwise tower to north and south closest to them. So here the gunbreaker will take the one at A and the paladin will take the one at here at one. The reason we do this is just for consistency purposes. So as soon as the towers just disappear, it means the first meteor will drop as well. You have to make sure you start rotating clockwise from there. So the Paladin will go from uh, all the way to south, then rotate all the way towards A. The same goes for the Gunbreaker. It's going to go towards this tower. As soon as the tower disappears, go all the way right here to drop their meteors one by one slowly and do not stop at all. If there are two meteors that drop too close to each other, it will explode and you're going to wipe. Let's look at the next mechanics present. There are four sets of red puddles. These are fire puddles. If you step onto them, you will get a fire debuff and this will kill you. Next thing is a set of towers. These towers are not always onto this configuration. They could possibly be like this. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here as well. So hence, make sure to locate where the towers are. How we do this, I will be telling you guys in a few. Next thing is we have to make sure to locate each DPS with one tank and healer. So here the samurai with the white mage, gunbreaker with the dancer, sage with the red mage, here there is the paladin and the reaper. The reason for this is there is going to be ice puddles dropping onto them. So we drop them onto the cardinal spots, making sure we do not overlap too much inside otherwise the players taking the towers inside are going to get clipped and die and then everyone will wipe. Now how do you locate on whether you go outside or you go inside and which tower you're taking? That is why I said earlier make sure to call out the role. We make sure to always look at this way that the Meteor roll always goes outside and takes uh, the one closest to them clockwise. So in this case, it would be the tanks taking this here and the tanks taking this here. On the east and west side, it would be the healers going out and the DPSs would be going inwards instead. So here, it would be the white mage that would go here and the sage would go here. The samurai would go inside, the dancer would go here the reaper would go here. But what happens to the red mage here? Here is how we resolve this. Read this carefully. You have to check whether you have two towers on your quadrant. So the quadrant here that uh, they are going to be looking at, so you notice that the samurai and the white mage is looking towards the west side and the sage and the red mage is looking towards the east side. There is only one tower here and there is two towers here. This basically means both of the sage and red mage are going to go outside. Here, otherwise, there will be only the red mage, I mean the white mage, sorry, that is going to go out and the samurai is going to be going inside instead. Now, if you have only one tower, 
the meteor roll goes out, the non-meteor roll out goes inwards, like I said before. If you're meteor and prey, you just go take north and south and take the closest clockwise tower. The second sec of tower I will be talking about in a bit. Let's take a look on how this works. So this is on where the ice puddle drops and then we go on to the third slide. Here you will notice that the gunbreaker and the paladin is not moving directly towards the outside. They are moving towards a zigzag pattern. That is they are following the outside edge of the ice and fire puddle. That is they go like at the ice puddle, they follow this, they go towards the fire puddle, into the ice puddle and then onto A. The same goes for the gunbreaker. The reason for this is to make sure that the meteors are not dropped too much close to each other. If they drop too much close to each other, they are all going to cause a wipe. Now let's check the next slide. There are going to be these towers, the next set of eight towers that are going to be spawning. They spawn on the cardinals and intercardinals. So here we just make sure that everyone else just goes to take uh, their basic spread position towers. So the samurai would be going from the inside to two. There would be the dancer going from inside to four. The reaper goes from inside towards D as you can see here. The only exception are for the gunbreaker and the paladin. They are the ones that just rotate. So the gunbreaker started at north, they go at south. If the gunbreaker started at south instead, they would have gone at north instead and vice versa. Now, before all this resolves, there is another thing that you need to pay attention to. There will be a knockback from the middle, and you have to look at the conviction cost on this mechanic. When we look at the enemy list, there will be a conviction cost right there. So as soon as the conviction cost gets past 50%, everyone who is outside pops arm's length and shoe cost. The reason for this is the knockback comes from the inside to outside. So if the player is too much to the outside, they are going to get uh, knocked back to the wall and die. So the only ones who use arm strength and shoe cost here are the ones taking the towers outside. The players inside position themselves in such a way that they are going to get knocked back towards the basic spread positions. So here the samurai is going to get knocked back towards two and the dancer is going to get knocked back towards 4 and the reaper is going to get knocked back towards D and this basically resolves the entire mechanic. Now let's take a look at another example of the same. So for this one I will be changing this tower position right here. I will just be placing it right here instead. So just in your this tower right here. So here you will notice that there is the samurai to the north. This means that the samurai and the red mage got the prey instead. This basically means that there is a swap between the samurai and the dancer and there is a swap with the reaper and the red mage. The rest stays the same. Everyone goes towards their quadrants and starts looking towards their quadrants on the cardinal positions here. Now if you notice that I move this tower here that is another configuration, here would basically mean that players who have two towers outside now, like I said before, are going to both go outside. So in such case, the white mage would be going towards here. Why here instead on here? Like I said before, we call out our meteor roll. The meteor roll always will be taking the one closest clockwise to them. So the dancer is going to go here instead because uh, DPS has prey. The white mage is going to go here. Here there will be the DPS that goes out first, so the Reaper is going to take at C here and the Sage is going to take the one next to it. Here since it's still DPS towers, this Red Mage goes here, the Samurai is going to be going towards here. Now for the tanks, they basically just go towards the middle and they take one here and they take one here. So basically this means that any configuration, it automatically solves this mechanic by itself. Whether it is another tower, like the tower is located here, then it would be one tank that goes there and then the white mage would be taking inside instead and then they get knocked back. The rest follows the basic same principle. 
if like the DPS gets here, they are going to be going into a zigzag manner, drop the meteos, and the same just like I explained before. They pop Omslanf, who is outside, the ones middle, they don't pop Omslanf, and they finally get knocked back onto their initial positions. Now let's take a look at some examples on pictures. Here it states that the tank and healers had meteor roll, there are two towers out, so hence, since the tanks and healers have meteor roll, Kat, our healer, is going to take the one closest clockwise to them. So this means that Kat will take this tower right here, and I will take this one right here. This is our quadrant, so this, this, and this. The second picture says, DPS meteor roll, one tower out. I take right tower, Yuri, our tank, takes inside. So here, since I have the prey marker, I am going towards north, and I take this one tower only. If they were going to be two towers towards this side, then Yuri would go outside too and would have taken one tower there. Let's take the third example. Tank healer meteor roll, one tower out, I take inside, Yuri takes tower. So here, the tanks and healers have the meteor roll as you can see right here. Basically, our tank is going to go all the way out. Uh, here we had a mistake because someone was uh, respawning. And uh, basically, the tank would have taken this and I would have gone outside and take one of these two towers. Here for this one, there is tank and healer meteor roll, one tower out, I take inside, Yuri takes tower again. So for this one again, you can see Yuri our tank, he is going to take this one as there is only one tower out, I would go inside instead. And just like this, uh, tank and healer meteor roll again, one tower out, I take inside, cut our our healer takes the left tower. So here, since it's tanks and healers again, our healer would take this one right here, because since there's nothing clockwise, they just take the one right there. And me, I would just go inside. I hope this video was helpful to you guys, and I'll see you guys later on. Thank you guys for watching.